guys, welcome back to my series Inside My Micro Bakery. If you're new here, I'm Lily and I run my own micro bakery called Lily's Loaf in South London. So I feel like it's actually been quite a while since I've filmed a proper video. I've been very busy actually and I just haven't been able to dedicate much time to YouTube so I'm sorry about that but here I am. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right into the Q&A. Um, so what is your favourite thing about Lily's Loaf? What is my favourite thing about Lily's Loaf? Um, my favourite thing about Lily's Loaf is probably the sense of pride that it's given me um, in my own personal life and professional life too. Um, I feel like it's quite hard to unlink the two because everything comes from me and comes from like my heart so I feel like it's quite hard to separate the professional from the personal but I feel like it's that sense of pride that comes from running my own business um, which I haven't felt in a long time. Um, I think I've mentioned before like in my early 20s I, I found it really quite hard um, like coming out of uni um, for several reasons, um, just like a little bit of a rocky patch um, towards the end of my degree um, and then like for the few years, a couple, two or three years after that, I just like really struggled with my mental health um, and also I think professionally as well, not finding like the right kind of job for me and linking that to how I felt about myself. Um, I, yeah, I really, really struggled in like, in that per period right after graduating from university. Um, so, taking the leap of faith to start up my own business and seeing the small steps of success that I've already had and just like learning so much every day it gives me so much pride already um, just overseeing all of these different aspects so everything from even the simple act of making a loaf from start to finish to delivering it to figuring out like the best delivery route for that day to meeting new people every day to um, finding new clients and finding new stockists and wholesale businesses that I'm supplying to, um, to seeing like my profit increase every month, to making like little labels for my products, everything is so fulfilling. And satisfying. What are your future plans? So future plans, yeah, so step one will be to finally get my new bike, my e-delivery bike. There's just like a backlog on all of the orders because they're proving to be quite popular at the moment. Um, mainly to like deliver, I was going to say to deliver children around London, to transport children around London. You know you see like those little tiddly tots in um, those like big cargo bikes. Step two would be to employ a delivery person um, so that I can focus on the business and on the baking. Step three will be market stalls in and around London um, as soon as I get my inspection rating. Um, that's something that I'm organising at the moment with Lambeth Council. Um, so when you start up a food business you have to register with your local council which I did and you have to have your level 2 food hygiene and safety certificate then you have to be inspected if you want to sell at a market in London um, so that is just what I'm organizing at the moment so I'm sure that will be a bit nerve-wracking but I'm sure it will be fine um, and then step four will be to hopefully get my own premises somewhere in London that's what I dream about um, just to have like my own cafe bakery uh, somewhere in South London I think um, and 
yeah, that is the future of Lily's life, I believe. Okay, so the next question is, do you do it full time? How did you know you were ready to quit your job and go for it? Um, yes, I do do it full time. Um, I also supplement my income by doing a couple freelance photography jobs. So recently, for example, I took photos at um, one of my friend's um, brother's weddings. So that was pretty cool. Um, and I'm always kind of open to that sort of thing and doing photography on the side and maybe small editing jobs too, um, just because that's where my background was before I started this. Um, how did you know you were ready to quit your job and go for it? So I didn't actually quit my job because I was kind of freelance anyway and I was actually looking for more full-time jobs and it was partly because I couldn't find what I was looking for and there weren't really any jobs during the pandemic um, in what I was going for for like creative um, sort of photography roles and photography assistant roles a roles <laughs> photography assistant roles there just there wasn't any of that going on because obviously everything was in lockdown so I didn't really have a job to quit because I was working for myself um, and I just decided to go for it because I wanted something full-time and because I couldn't find it in the conventional sense I just went for it and I'm lucky that I live at home and I am in a position that I can do that and that I could just launch it um, all by myself um, but yeah I just had a belief in my baking capabilities and in my passion and knowing where my happy place is and my happy place has always been in the kitchen um, you know I have like other happy places like by the sea and walking in like the countryside and um, all sorts of different happy places but you know what I mean um, in the work sense so I just yeah, I just decided to go for it. Um, and I also kept on seeing these videos on YouTube of like other people who had kind of done similar things. So like Kitty Tate, who I've mentioned in the past, who runs um, the Orange Bakery in Oxford. Um, I, I read an article about her setting up her own bakery. She, she was age 14 or 15 and um, I just found that so inspiring and then another woman called Josephine in LA who set up a bakery. I just thought to myself, you know what, if they can do it, I can do it too. Where did you learn baking? What did you do in France? Um, so I am completely self-taught. Um, I learned to bake with my granny from when I was very little. We used to make like these little biscuits. And what did I do in France? Well, I was studying in Paris and that was brilliant. I didn't love the whole university experience but I loved living in Paris. I loved it. And then um, I moved down south. I got a job working for a yacht charter company and I was the marketing assistant there and I lived in Cannes for like six, seven, maybe even more, no more, like eight or nine months um, from like January through until end of August, early September um, and that was just bliss. I completely fell in love with the south of France and oh I was just so happy there. It was it was such a it was such a happy time and like I pushed myself so much in so many different ways and I lived by myself in like a little studio maybe five minute walk from the beach and I just had the best time ever. Um, so yeah, that's what I was doing in France. How do you start a micro bakery? What are the first steps? How do you attract new customers? Um, how do you start a micro bakery? I mean, I would say the first steps would be probably get a really good website together. Um, take some nice photos or get someone who can take nice photos for you. Um, make sure the website is like fully functioning and has like some sort of a delivery 
plan on there or something where you can input the days when you want to deliver. Um, I'd say, yeah, that is your shop window essentially, as well as any social media pages that you're using, that is your shop window as well. So get that looking really beautiful and really presentable to your customers. So that is my number one thing for starting a micro bakery business. Um, I think it's also cool as well to show your work process um, to your customers and to show like the behind the scenes because yeah it's very well seen like loaves of bread or like pastries and pretty things like that but I think what people really invest in is the individual and um, your kind of story behind the brand because hopefully they can connect with that somehow and they're buying into your brand as opposed to the products themselves. Yes, the products have to be really, really great, but I think it's it's the person behind the brand that you're actually investing in. Um, so yeah, so that would be my first step to opening a micro bakery business. And then how do you attract new customers? So um, initially I asked my friends and family to send out my website link to anyone they knew um, and it just kind of spiraled from there and then I started getting customers from like Instagram or from YouTube um, also I think because I started working fairly early on with caf a cafe um, in the local area I think maybe collaborating with them got me some new customers um, I also anytime I got a new order I would give that customer samples to give to their neighbours and to ask them to spread the word too um, just because it's all about like making those local connections in the local area and really getting the word out there that you exist and yeah that sort of thing really um, Oh yeah, and I also used to include like little notes um, asking the customers if they could spread the word um, too, just to like reinforce. So like you might say it to them, um, and you might like have that little card as well with the sample to, for them to pass it on to whoever they want, like a friend or somebody who lives nearby. What's the most profitable product you have, and why? cookies and my morning buns are definitely my most profitable product. How many hours do you spend working? Are you working alone? So I get up at six every day and I'm normally working from, let's say like, after I've turned the ovens on, I'm working from maybe eight in the morning through until seven or eight at night like when it's a busy day so I guess kind of 12 hours but I'm not working every single hour um I am on my bake and delivery days but yeah I'd say like 12 13 hours at the moment um do you see yourself having a storefront anytime soon I hope so I really hope so um yeah that I mean that's the dream but it's just kind of figuring out how to go about doing that. I guess it would mean uh, getting in touch with like a commercial property agent and seeing what's on offer in the area and then maybe getting like a crowdfund budget or getting a loan and then employing staff. So yeah, there's lots of, lots of things to factor in. Um, but yeah, that would definitely be the dream. Okay, so I mean, I've been filming for over half an hour now. So I think I'm gonna wrap this up um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see next time from me. Um, leave any comments below if you want to get in touch. Um, yeah, just write a comment below or message me on Instagram. I'm always here to help. Um, but yeah, you can order from lilysoap.com. I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you guys. Bye.